on forgiveness and I want to get straight into the topic so that you can you can allow the Lord to work through you. We're taking you through a series of talks on restoring your relationship with the Lord to prepare you for the sacrament of reconciliation and allow the Lord to restore your relationship with Him. But before He can do that, you want to remove any block, any block that is in your life that will prevent the grace of God from flowing through. You want to take it out of your life. Remove any block in your life. And one major block, one major block that prevents the grace of God flowing inside your life is unforgiveness. The inability to forgive the person who has hurt you. Maybe the inability to forgive yourself for a sin in your own life. I want to start with this story of South Africa. In the years of the apartheid, between the years of 1948 to 1994, it was ruled by the Dutch white, and they segregated the people into a racial class system that segregated people from black, white, colored, and Indian. And they were all segregated into different ghettos in different parts of the city. And they were not allowed to mix with each other. So much so that there was even segregation even in bus, in restaurants where you went to eat. The people who were colored or black were looked down upon, were humiliated, were insulted. During this period, 3.5 million non-white South African were taken out from their homes and moved to segregated neighborhoods, large ghettos. And they were put there because they were colored, because they looked different. One man, God used one man to rise up, to be a voice that will be different. Do you know this man? What's his name? This is the young Nelson Mandela. Young Nelson Mandela stood up and started to speak out for these people who were segregated. And because of that, they oppressed him and they put him in prison. They threw him into prison. They persecuted him because he was standing up for the truth. After a period where the apartheid broke down, Nelson Mandela was released. On the 10th of May 1994, Nelson Mandela was sworn as the first black president of South Africa. And one of the first things that Nelson Mandela did was establish the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission was something where the the government, sort of, this commission, would offer amnesty. Amnesty means pardon. Pardon for all those people who had mistreated the blacks. So if anybody, any of the whites, the Dutch white, who had mistreated the blacks, was to say, yes, I'm one of them who mistreated the blacks, but I'm sorry, please forgive me then the Truth and Reconciliation Commission will go through the case and grant amnesty. Why was this? Because Nelson Mandela said, when he came out of prison, he realized that if he did not leave behind all hatred and anger and bitterness in his life, he would still be in prison. He needed to get, he wanted to be free, truly free. To remove all hatred, bitterness, anger. And he wanted his people to be free. 
And he realized that the only way they can be free is to offer pardon and forgiveness. Nelson Mandela said, One of the things I learned when I was negotiating was that until I changed myself, I could not change others. Say that with me. Until I changed myself, I cannot change others. So, Nelson Mandela established the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And this Truth and Reconciliation Commission received 7,112 applications for amnesty, for pardon. 7,112. Out of which only 849 pardon was granted. It was a court case. And one of the most famous court cases was about a man called Vanderbrook. A policeman called Vanderbrook. Police. Vanderbrook was a Dutch policeman in South Africa. And the story goes that Vanderbrook particularly targeted these black Africans. And there was a case where Vanderbrook went into the house, took the husband of a family, beat the husband in front of the wife and children, took him out, continued to beat him, and then killed him, took him to an undisclosed location and burnt. Vanderbrook burnt the body of this black man. His wife and his children never saw him. A couple of months after that, Vanderbrook came back to the same house, went for the son of this woman, took the son, beat the son, kicked the son, and killed the son in front of the mother. There was so much of pain. If somebody did that to you, to your family, what would you feel? If you're a normal person, what would you feel? Tell me the words. What would you feel? Anger, what else would you feel? Revenge. Anger, revenge. That's the most normal feeling. Anger, revenge, hatred. The person destroyed somebody you loved. When this application for amnesty came, Vanderbrook was one of those 7,000 who applied for amnesty. He wanted pardon. So the court brought this old woman whose husband and son was killed by Vanderbrook to court. And this whole legal proceedings happened, and Vanderbrook confessed to the murder. Vanderbrook confessed to what happened. And after all that, they turned to the woman, the old lady now, and asked her, Ma'am, he's already admitted to having committed all these offenses. What do you say now? What do you say? They asked the old woman. And the old woman said, I want three things. I want three things. Number one, I want Mr. Vanderbrook to take me to the place where he burnt my bo husband's body. I want to gather up the dust and the ashes and give him a proper decent burial. Take me to the place where he burnt my husband's body. Number two, my husband and my son were my only family. Vanderbrook killed my husband and my son. I want him to come and visit me in the ghetto twice in a month and spend the whole day with me so that I can pour out all the love that I have in my life on him. On Mr. Vanderbrook. Number three, third thing, I want to offer my forgiveness to Vanderbrook. To know that I forgive him because Jesus Christ died to forgive me. That is also the wish of my husband. And I want you now to come and hold me 
As I walk across the room to the place where right now Mr. Vanderbrook is standing, and I want to hug him, embrace him, and kiss him, and tell him, I forgive him. The whole courtroom was shocked. The whole courtroom was shocked. The policeman took the old lady and led her by the hand across the room to Wenderbrook. There was pin drop silence. And as they were walking, the people in the courtroom started to sing. Amazing grace how the that uh, like I was but am was but There was not one dry eye in that whole courtroom. Everybody was in tears. Friends, this is the power of forgiveness. When you forgive, you give life. When you forgive, you give life. This whole incident was made into a movie called Forgiveness, which won both uh, local and international film awards in 2004 talking about this entire situation. It is for this precise reason, when you forgive, you give life, God says to you, strive to forgive. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 and 15. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy, without which no one can see God. And see to it that no one misses the grace of God, and that no bitter root, say bitter root, no bitter root grows up that will cause trouble and defile many. This bitter root in your life is unforgiveness. The bitter root that grows deep within you and starts to contaminate you, defile you. When you allow the roots of unforgiveness, hatred, anger towards somebody else in your life to grow, You are hurting yourself. No one else. That is why Jesus says, forgive. Forgive. When you forgive, you not only give life to the other person, you give life to yourself. You give life to yourself. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 to 31. Paul says, in your anger, do not sin. Say with me. Notice Paul doesn't say don't get angry. It is only right you get angry. If somebody hurt you, you should get angry. If you're not getting angry, something is wrong with you. You're not normal. You're not normal. If you are hurt, you should get angry. But in the anger, do not lead the anger to lead you to sin. Anger is an emotion. And you should be having an emotion. That is normal if you have an emotion. A lady came to me and said, Brother, brother, she said, My husband is having an affair with another woman. My husband is having an affair with another woman. And guess what, brother? I know this woman. The woman is my friend. And my husband, after doing everything with the woman, he comes back and tells me everything he did with the woman. So I I asked her, sister, how you feel? She said, brother, that's my problem. She said, brother, I cannot get angry with him, brother. Why? Because she's been pushed down so low down that she has lost all emotions. All her emotions are dead. Dead. No more emotions. Anger... 
is normal. You need to feel angry. But in your anger, do not let your anger lead you to sin. Anger got an expiry date. Just like all the products in the supermarket. All got expiry date. Yes, you go and buy whatever product in the supermarket. You take the tin and you look behind it. Underneath is written the expiry date. So anger has got an expiry date. After the expiry date, anger becomes poison in your life. So you need to get rid of the anger. But it is normal to get angry. That is why Paul says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. That means you feel the anger, but immediately forgive. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't make room for the devil. Don't give room. Because if you stay in your anger, you're giving a room, an entry point for the devil to come into your life. Colossians chapter 3 verse 13. Paul says, Bear with one another and forgive each other whatever grievance you may have. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. This is the key. Again and again we hear Jesus saying it. Forgive. Forgive. Why? Because if you don't forgive, the one you are hurting is not the other person. The one you are hurting is yourself. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 to 16. If you forgive men the sin they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive, then God will not forgive you. Again, Mark chapter 11, verse 25. When you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven may also forgive you. Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 to 22. Peter says, how many times must I forgive? Jesus says, 70 times 7. Which means again and again and again. 70 times 7. Forgiveness is a process. It's not magic. You need to choose again and again and again to forgive. I'm talking to men here, okay? Young men here. Young men here. How many young men here? You sure, yeah? Strong young men, yeah? I'm looking for a go and strong young man. Go and not you, Keegan. No, 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 no. Enough, Keegan. Keegan, we finished with you already. Somewhere around there, over at the back. Yes? Go and strong young man. Strong young man from Goa. Yeah? No, 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 no. No need in front here anymore. Okay, somewhere in the middle. Come on, guys. Any strong young men from Goa? Besides the priest, of course, yes? Yes? Come on! One volunteer, very quick, come up on the stage. Strong young men from Goa? Very good, you're strong young men. Okay. Praise the Lord. Very quick. Run. I need one more young man who loves to cook. One young man that loves to cook. One young man that loves to cook. Quickly. Not you, not you, not you, not you, not front row. I'm looking, there you go. Yes. Thank you. Very quick, brother. Quick. What's your name? Acton. Atom. Acton. 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 Acton from Goa. Yeah. Hi, Acton. And you? Bevan. Bevan from where are you? Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Wonderful. Atom from Goa. Bevan from Sri Lanka. Give them a big hand. Acton. Come. Yeah. You, I asked for strong young men from Goa. You volunteered. Yeah. Yes? Do you believe you're strong? Yeah. 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 Okay. Don't worry. Take out your sandals from your shoes. Take out. Take out. Yes. Take out. Okay. Climb on top of the chair. Yes. No. Chair might break. Okay. He said chair might break. Turn around. Turn around. Okay. Turn around. Perfect. You can see him? Yes. Yes. Forgiveness is a process. Say process. 
Forgiveness is the process. Let's see. You got some muscles? Yeah? Are you left-handed or right-handed? Right-handed. Okay. So this is the wrong hand. Okay. Okay. Oh, good. Got? Yes? Something there. This is mineral water. Kripa. Yes? Divine mineral water. Very holy water. Okay? Kripa. Okay? Now, Kripa is not very heavy. But, Acton will hold the water. Okay? Acton, your job is to keep the water up. Okay? And stay there. Hand cannot come down. Until the end of the talk, you will be standing there. But you stay there. Okay? You stay there. Okay? I ask for what? Strong young men from Goa. Okay, you volunteered. Praise the Lord. You didn't know what you volunteered for. God knows. God bless you. Okay? You stay put there. I cannot keep an eye on him all the time. If ever he puts the hand down, any of you, or any of you see him hand going down, you shout, Acton! Okay? Okay? Hand up. Okay? Huh? Okay, okay, okay. Like that. Okay. Poor thing. Okay. Okay? Yeah, okay. Stay put. Praise the Lord. Very good. What's your name again? Bevin. Bevin. Very good. Bevin, say, forgiveness is a process. Forgiveness is a process. Yes. It does. It's not magic. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time because it's ongoing. Ongoing. Now, forgiveness is a process. You know what is this? This is an onion. This is an onion. Okay? It doesn't, it's not magic. Say put, uh, Acton, you, you are going rock and roll. <laughs> Say put, okay? Forgiveness is a process. It is, doesn't happen instantaneously. That means you need to keep going over and over and over again. This is the condition of your heart when you refuse to forgive. Okay? Camera zoom. Zoom on this. Okay? This is the condition of your heart when you refuse to forgive. Your heart looks like this. Very coarse and dry. No life in it at all. So coarse and dry. It looks very miserable. This is the state of your heart. Acton, are you okay? Yeah, keep it up. Yeah, keep it up. Okay? But when you choose to forgive... You peel out all the dry skin. You peel out all the dry skin. 